No, my life, I just feel myself. I'm starting to change, man. I'm a, I'm a happier person, and I, I think I'm ready, man. I want to have a kid. I like toddlers, man. That's, that's the best age. They're hilarious, you know? They never have a shirt on. They already got a beer belly, even though they never drank before. And they're not even self-conscious. They don't try to suck it in. They just let it hang out over the diaper. It's got, like, cereal in their hair. They're a mess. They're a mess. And we welcome him into our NHL Live studio. It's Bill Burr. So we're listening to you make fun of toddlers and moms. You don't even have a toddler. I didn't make fun of toddlers. I was making fun of uh, stay-at-home moms. No, I wasn't making fun of... No, wait, let me remember. I was making fun of Oprah, who said being a stay... As, you know, being a mother was the most difficult job on the planet. So all I did was list some other jobs that I felt were a little more difficult. That's all I did. I never said mothering wasn't an important job. All you maniacs who emailed me with the most difficult job, but you got time to search me and send me, you know, reams of hate mail. What is more difficult than being a mom? What? We, we don't, I don't know, drilling for oil and it blows up, your back's on fire, you jump into some salt water. Swim through the oil that's on the fire at the surface, and then you gotta sit there and tread water, hope you don't get eaten by a shark before the Coast Guard gets there. Have that you sounds tough. Would you rather do that or hang out with some kids? That's all I said. I'm not saying. You, I'm not saying. You know. I'm not saying it's not an important job. I'm not saying it's not a hard job. I'm just saying it's not the most difficult job on the planet. That's all it was. Why can't anybody hear me on that one? They just can't hear what I'm saying. I think you made a good case right there. I, yeah. mean, I can't imagine oil all over me, trying to swim, sharks attacking me. I mean, what about a job you just hate? <laughs> well, you got to sit in a cubicle looking job. at spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah, but you can hang out, you know, make grilled cheese sandwiches, watch game shows, <laughs> <laughs> sleep when they sleep. Embrace and not to mention, Embrace not it. to mention, you decided to have a kid. That's what kills me. It's not like all of a sudden, you know, you got diagnosed with a kid. You know, you had one. You had a damn kid. And then they start coming at me, you know. The other day I said to my guy, oh, God, i got to fly across this country again. And he's like, dude, don't even start with me. i got two kids. And it's like, that was your choice. Yeah. i got to go to college. Don't even start with me. I flunked out in high school. It's like, like it's my fault. I, li I like diagnose. You were diagnosed with a kid. Yeah, you were so diagnosed. sorry. You made a so choice. sorry. It's a very important job. God bless you for doing it. But, you know. It's not the most difficult job. How All difficult right. is it to be a comedian? Uh, the first uh, seven years are a little rough. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, until you, once you get funny and you, and you get over uh, humiliation, and once you're past humiliation, you're you're able to you be able to, to you know to sustain it. You know, I would say it would be like uh, which like hockey. You get into playing shape. You know, you take yeah. a couple hits, your body toughens up a little bit. It's the same thing with like with like getting heckled. Except it's not a physical thing; it's a mental thing. And it just, you know, yeah. takes, a, takes a little bit of your soul for a while. What was the worst time that that happened to you? Because I can imagine it'd be tough. You're up there and people are giving it to you. Do you uh, remember one incident in particular where you were like, boy, this, uh, is, this is really crazy? I remember performing in Lee, Massachusetts. In tough a crowd there. In a, in a restaurant. <laughs> tough crowd in no, Lee. There was no crowd, really. <laughs> but in the next room over, there was a bachelor party and there was no door uh -huh. to the room that they were in. And I was just standing there in front of like three people and they just sort of gradually started gathering. Nice. And somebody nice. threw a dinner roll at me at like, you know, <laughs> Randy Johnson level speed. <laughs> Missed. Yeah. But I was so, I mean, that was thing, it didn't hit me, but I was so mad and there was so many of them. I would have lost one on one anyways, but I was so mad and I wanted, there was nothing I could do and I felt them just waiting me for to say that one word and I was going to get beat down yeah. and I had to swallow my pride and walk out to my rusted up car and drive away. The yeah, Chevy Nova. And no, it was an 83 Ford Ranger and I remember I was screaming at them as I was driving away yeah. and it was just me and my own thoughts and the sound of my tire on the mass pike as I drove off. <laughs> what a happy story. Uh, you know, it's, it's the worst. No, but you're tough. no, you know what you do immediately? The, like, there's, no, there's no cell phones back then. That's how long I've been doing it. But once you get home, how you get through it is you call other comedians, and they just laugh and laugh as you're telling them, and they just, then they start telling stories, and you feel good. Yeah, what you end up realizing is just all those horrific things just become funny stories to tell on, on these shows. It's there just you when, go. You're, when you're going through it and you don't Not have any fun. happy stories yet, they're, they're a little rough. Yeah. So born and raised in Boston, how long have you been suburbs, a Bruins? Suburbs of Boston. I always now say you, that you corrected me twice on that already. Is that good, like a terrible thing no, to say? No, because of Goodwill Hunting. Ever since Goodwill Hunting came out, say, usually people say away from, I just say Boston if I'm on the other side of the country because I don't want to say you know, where yeah. I'm from and they go, and where is that? Is that Vermont? You know? Yeah. So, but if you say Boston, then they immediately go Southie, you know, like yeah. you're a genius with a mop. I wasn't. <laughs> I lived in the safe suburbs and I, and I sucked at math. <laughs> we should mention you're performing at Caroline's all weekend, and we're actually, for the most creative email, 
We're going to give away two tickets to your show on Sunday. So we'll NHL Live at NHL.com. Most creative. It's got to be funny. Email. Okay. Two free tickets by the, by the end of the time. But we'll have some fun talking about the Bruins. So what do you make of this Bruins team now? Tim Thomas gets a shout out last night. What kind of a Bruins fan are you? Are you fair weather? Are you there through thick and thin? I, I have two periods. There through thick and thin, there through the 80s and right into the 90s. Right when I started doing stand-up, I, I kind of had a rough time watching hockey because I was out when they were playing. I moved to L.A. when the Red Wings got good, won two cups, and then uh, in, the, in the 2000s with that whole clutch and grab, clutch and grab time and yeah. the left wing lock, I just it really bored me to tears and I got away from it for a minute and I, I came back strong probably in 2007. So that's probably the most honest. I, I was hardcore right through the 80s, right up till... Uh, well, I would say maybe right right through till the, the Red Wings won. That that year when uh, Buffalo didn't win it, they played the Stars. Right yeah, then I started okay. getting really busy in my career. And um, and then I, I kind of just, you know. I Funny, was, that's yeah. around the same time the Bruins started to kind of go downhill. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I'm, I'm, no, I'm like everybody. Everybody tries to act like they're that, you know, you know when you watch Thick some awful thing. Yeah. yeah, but you see when your team sucks, you see who's there. Yeah. There's, there's nobody handful, there. Handful I don't care if the Yankees stink or the Bruins stink, whoever. Nobody's there. You're not going to go if they stink. Why? You, you know, I actually like with the Celtics. I didn't watch the Celtics forever, not because I wasn't a fan. It was just so painful to look at that parquet floor and see that that emblem and just see how awful they were. Yeah. And I grew up in the '80s and I saw Bird and all those guys, and it was just it was just too painful to watch. I remember one time I went to a game. I'm totally switching the subject. I went to a, a Celtics Raptors game. I'm sitting right down the court. I didn't know anybody on either t except Paul Pierce. And I just go, that poor bastard. Look at him out there. And you were thinking maybe there's like a bachelor party somewhere nearby. Oh, no. Then they can come and stumble in and watch this game with you or something. No, you know? no, no. I've had enough of those. But uh, I did, you know, for people uh, thinking, you know, hockey always seems really hard for people who didn't come from hockey families. You yeah. feel like you just got to start out playing it. And I, I only played it a few times growing up, pond hockey. But I actually took up the sport since I moved to California like the last year. And uh, it's, it's been awesome, man. Really just get together with a bunch of other comics. A lot of Canadians live out in L.A. Yeah, that's right. They, yeah, they're, they're, they're insane. They show up, they have all this stuff, right? <laughs> and then they show up, and they're, they're flying around the ice using their feet, second pair of hands. And you're like, geez, did you play varsity? They're like, nah, I just played pond hockey. Yeah. It's like, really? You got all the RoboCop stuff? Uh. You got all this? So my skating's getting better, but my puck handling, I've, I've been joking with my buddies, it's kind of like... Uh, Texting while driving. It's the best way. <laughs> I just look down, and instead of looking up and seeing a tree, it's some big guy going to smash into me. So, no, be careful with that. What no, no, I, dude, I got all the pads. You got it. When right? I first came out, all I had was the helmet, the gloves, and the skates, and I was falling. You, you don't think yeah. how hard the ice is. Oh, it hurts. It, you it know, hurts. and I was getting those bruises that, like, three days later showed up, yeah. and I did I get caned? I mean, you're showering. <laughs> see so I got all. The pads now, so you can be a lot more confident now because you just feel like the boy in the bubble. We, we, we don't play full contact either. You're like uh, Milan Lucic now. You're like a big, uh, thick character on the ice. No, I'm more like uh, Ulf Samuelson. Oh. Or like <laughs> Lindy Ruff used to wear the huge oh, pads. I'm yeah. one of those guys. Okay. No contact, shying away from the fights. You know, I'm one of those guys. <laughs> Which of the Bruins today do you like? Oh, you know what? I'm like in, uh, I'm like pretty much loving Tim Thomas, even though he scares the hell out of me. The amount of times I've seen him make a save when he's actually facing his own goal yeah. <laughs> just really scares yeah. the hell yeah. out of me. Uh, I love Zidane Ochara. I wish he would be more physical. That's my only thing. I'm, I'm old school hockey. I just see that big guy, and I just want to see him, you know. I like what he did up in Montreal. It's unfortunate what happened, but that was a nice hit. You know, that's, that's how I see it there, Montreal. I'm uh, sure they're going to get a lot of cards yeah. and letters now from Montreal. I know I, I did. I, I like Lucic. I, li I love Craigie. Uh, I, I love them all. And, and if, if uh, I'm hoping that uh, Sagan's going to, like, this, is gonna, this isn't just like a hot streak he's going yeah, through. No, I'm I really think hoping, he's the real deal. I'm really hoping because i got to tell you, uh, you know, t Tampa really scares the hell out of me, even though we're up two games to one. I missed the last game because I was working. I don't know what we did to, to shut them down, but they just had three legitimate guys that you could, yeah. build, you could build a team around them. And, uh, and you know what scares me about them is they don't have any quitting them. Like, they, they just keep coming. They come that game when we got up, like, what was it, like... 6-3, they yeah. scored two more. And they, yeah, and they just kept coming. And, and uh, I don't know, part of that, I think, is because you can have a two-line pass again. It just, you know, <laughs> breaks your neck watching the damn game now. But, uh, yeah, they, they're, they're definitely a scary team, and I'm not by any means thinking that, uh, that we're going to win. Although, when I tweet, I just sit there and trash Tampa. Yeah. I know I trashed the city, and they're getting really upset, you know. That's okay. That's your job. Yeah, I don't care. We're, we're, you know, you know, some people get it that I'm just messing around, but other people, other people like, we're going to boo you the next time you come here. All right, you know, uh, as long as you show up, buy a ticket. I don't care. Give us the differences between the cities. I mean, Tampa's known for a few things. Boston's known for a few others. 
Yeah, Tampa has a lot of gentlemen's clubs next to post offices for some <laughs> unknown reasons. <laughs> they get their mail well. Yeah, we're yeah. still big on the Revolutionary War. At least the tourists, like, I don't know, I never went on that stuff, the Freedom Trail and Old Ironsides. Uh -huh. um, I don't know, Bo Boston's a really hardcore sports fan. Tampa is, is definitely an upcoming uh, sports town, but I always tease them. Anytime I see uh, a franchise, if you have to hand out thunder sticks or everybody <laughs> wears the same t-shirt, we're having a whiteout. I mean, right there, you're trying to create some sort of, some sort of tradition. So, um, yeah, I mean, I can't. I mean, they, they actually can talk trash because I don't know how long they've been in the league now. A little over 10 years? Well, well they, they uh, won a cup. That's what I'm saying. They, they, won, they won a cup, so yeah. that's what I figured these people would tweet back to me. Yeah. Like, we have but a they cup. don't. You yeah, get, you, what you do is I, all I'm doing trash in Tampa. It's just a big misdirection that yeah. they've won a cup. You know, they won a cup like, what, seven years 2004, ago? Yeah, 2004, you're right, yeah. 2004, yeah. Seven years ago, yep. And we haven't uh, 39 years. How about, yeah. uh, how about <laughs> it? Can you win one this year? No, you want to be great. If we do, I can retire as a sports fan, technically, because I've seen World Series, I've seen a Super Bowl, and I've seen NBA. Championship, right. so I, I've never seen them uh, hoist, hoist the cup. cup. I did a show in Detroit at the Royal Oak Theater, and I was so jealous of all of them. I was joking about how many cups they've won. Since yeah. I've been, like you guys in the crowd, half of you guys probably drank from the cup they've won it so many times. That's right. Yeah, let's give it to Larry. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's let him have it. It's for his a while. day with it. Yeah. But Boston is this used to be this town of you know Red Sox faithful. The woe is me, bitter. They never win a hundred years. Yeah. You guys, the Patriots win, the Celtics. Yeah. Win. You know you can't be bitter anymore. Now Boston's going to lose its identity I know, and like yeah. Oh, that's all that ESPN crap. They so blew that out of the proportion. <laughs> I moved out of Boston in 1995. I had never heard of the Curse of the Babe. Dan Shaughnessy wrote the book, and then uh -huh. that blew up. God bless me, made a ton of money, but. When the Red Sox didn't win, we weren't going, ah, oh, the, the curse of... You know what's a great one to watch? Watch the 86 uh, World Series against the Mets when the ball goes through Buckner's leg. Yeah. There's no mention of the curse. They did, and the Mets win it. That's all they say. <laughs> and they don't go, oh, and the curse of the Bay. But then you fast forward after the book has come out and all that stuff. I remember one time I was watching a game on ESPN. It was like, you know, while the curse, the curse was still going, um, rather than just saying we were a bad franchise. Um, it was like around 2003, and we were like up like five runs against the Mets in the middle of July, and they start coming back, and like Chris Berman's going like, oh, in the, the curse of the babe. <laughs> and it's, it's like, it's a game in July, dude. It's a game in July. Well, but, but we were definitely pessimistic, but everybody, you know, anytime they show a Boston fan, they always show some guy in a dock, like tying a knot, like we're all lobster fishermen. Uh -huh. I lived Aren't there 27 you? years. Yeah. I never met a fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, then I'm disrespecting it. There's a hard There's job. There's a hard job. Mothers. There's a hard job. Hey, Seriously. Where were you in, you brought up 86. I mean, as a Boston sports fan, I mean, that's a moment that people now can look back and laugh yeah. because they've won since then. Yeah. But where were you when that happened? Oh, 86. Uh, well, I went to the Celtics championship parade. Okay. And then we got Len Bias, and I'm like, here we go again. And then that awful thing happened. Yeah. That was a great summer. I saw Eddie Murphy on the Raw tour. <laughs> I can go right back through this whole summer. <laughs> okay. And then uh, when the Red Sox... July 15th. Well, oh, wait, wait. July 15th. The Red, the Red so when the Red Sox blew it, I actually... This is how sad a town we were. They blew the World Series, and rather than just saying, to hell with it, let's watch the Patriots, they actually... Some Boston fans remember this. They had Red Sox Appreciation Day. <laughs> we were just appreciating yeah. that we came that close, and me and a bunch of my friends went down there, got hammered, and I remember walking into some sort of building... And for some reason, it was funny to me to push the numbers with my nose on the elevator mm -hmm. when I was drunk. And, like, I don't know if you've noticed, the emergency one sticks out. Yeah. And those ones are all flush. So my giant flat-screen TV forehead hit it the alarm. Emergency, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, think, I remember we gave Bill Buckner a big round of applause, though. I do remember that. That was before... I think we were just still all stunned. Stunned. Well, here's hoping for your sake that you'll have a Bruins memory so you can erase that one. We, we thank you for coming in. Oh, Caroline's no, no, I'm, I'm fine. Like, all, those, all those Super Bowls and stuff, yeah, I am really. fine. I just, okay. I just want to see... I just want to see him win. As long as the Canadians don't win, I'm actually... That, that's my victory. Oh, know? okay, right. <laughs> so you're Caroline's I just like tonight, getting tomorrow? them going. Tonight, uh, tomorrow. Yes, I'm, I'm, uh, two shows tonight, two shows uh, Saturday, and two on Sunday. All we got left is 10:30 uh, on Sunday. That's the only one. Oh wow! Okay, left. so double headers for you. Yes, Thank you for running coming my in. mouth. Nice to running meet you. my mouth all <laughs> week. All right, making a living, baby. All right, God all right. bless. All right, everybody. thanks so much. Thank you for having me. All right, much.